Amen. Amen. All right, so we're in the series called The Psalms, and I love it, and I know a lot of you have been telling me you appreciate it. Thank you for that. Um, I think it's a great book. I didn't write it, but it's in there. And, uh, but it's a great book. And, um, but in, this is what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5. Look at this. He says, speak to one another with psalms and uh, hymns and spiritual songs. And uh, the idea here is, I think you could take away from this, like, like uh, you know, Paul is saying, like, you could take these psalms and speak these psalms to each other. That the psalms kind of like address different areas of our lives and different experiences that we go through. And uh, like we've talked about three so far. So like we've talked about a gratitude psalm. And this is where we're talking about like, hey, listen, there are moments where you're, you're like maybe doing the wah wahs and uh, you need to stop and thank God, you know? And uh, so uh, there's a gratitude psalm. And you may run across somebody and say, hey, listen, you need to read Psalm 30. Man, you need to read that because it's really good for the soul about being gra- having a heart of gratitude towards God no matter what's going on. So you can, that's, I think that's what Paul's trying to say. Speak those things into each other. You know, these psalms are, are, you, are God's word and can speak into that person's life. Maybe somebody's going through a dark night of the soul and you're like, man, they don't feel like they'll ever, there's anything good that's ever going to come out of it. You could say, listen, read Psalm 22. Uh, we talked about Psalm 22 and that there's always a corner to be turned. There's a resurrection, a restoration. It may not be exactly the way you think it'll end, but, but it's exactly the way God wants it to go. And so you can trust him and that there's a, a, a corner that can be turned. Uh, and so you can say, man, you're going through a dark time. Listen, read, read Psalm 22. And uh, that'd be really good for them. And then we talked about last week, it's like sometimes we just get angry. We're not like frustrated. We're not angry. We're like enraged. And, and it's like, I don't know how to deal with this. I'm frustrated with the people around me, whatever it may be. And you're like, how do I deal with this? If I open my mouth, it, it may cause some damage. And uh, that's why we talked about an imprecatory psalm, which is where, where David in Psalm 109 talks about his anger and frustration in a moment. But he realizes, listen, um, I can't do this because if I open my mouth, I'm going to wound the people around me. But it's God who is just and righteous and good. And I need to trust him that he'll exercise justice and goodness and righteousness and so I'm going to stop and pray and say God I need you to take this off my shoulders I'm going to I'm going to surrender this over to you and so if you've got anybody run into some pretty cranky people you could say hey man read 109 it'll be an encouragement but also um, uh, it'll say everything that they've been wanting to say it's a powerful powerful song well this morning we're going to talk about a, a remembrance psalm and the whole idea about a remembrance psalm is to force the reader to remember the things that God has already done I mean, that's the whole point of a remembrance psalm. And they're, there's, they're all over the book of Psalms. But it, but it forces you to stop and think, let's remember, you know? Um, you ever go into a room and you forgot why you went in there? It's like you're trying to remember. We, we need those moments where we need to see, because sometimes we forget about who God is and what God has done. You say, no, we don't do that. We do. And a lot of it has to do with the way that we, we react and, and deal with situations. And he's saying, listen, a remembrance psalm is to help you get your mind right and remember who God is and what God has done. That really, God is able. No matter what you face, no matter what you go through, no matter what obstacle that, is in, that seems insurmountable in front of you and the distress that's behind you, he's saying God is able to help you get through it. Now, it doesn't mean that the way you get through it is exactly the way you think, but the re- reality is you have a God that's going to help you get through. So last week I shared with you a little bit about my brother-in-law and uh, found out that he has a tumor in his esophagus. Uh, they said it was closer to the stomach, which is of all the places it could be is the best place for that. So um, uh, not that they want him to have cancer, they're saying this is the best place. They said it was, um, there's four stages, it was stage 3B. Now there's stage a, 3A, 3B, 3C, and then three, uh, uh, stage 4. And so he's got a rough road ahead. And uh, they said it was contained. And so they're going to do like five days a week, six weeks in a row, radiation and chemotherapy and all this kind of stuff. It's going to be a long road ahead. But he may be feeling, God, can you get over this? Can you get over this hill? And you may be in that moment where you're saying, it may not be cancer, it may be, I need something, I don't know, something from a spouse, something from my kids, or something from work, or something. I need, I, there's an obstacle in front of me, and it seems insurmountable. And, uh, and I need to remind myself again that God is able. I may not understand how he's going to do it, but God is able. And that's what a remembrance psalm is. So we're going to look at a remembrance psalm this morning. So I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalm 77. 77. Two sevens, it's got to be perfect, right? So Psalm 77. And, uh, and if you've read psalms before, you'll notice sometimes they have these little, these little um, like italicized words right below the psalm number. It says this, For the director of music... For Jeduthun of Asaph of Psalm. And you may say, I never understand what those things mean. 
Sometimes it's the writer trying to tell you a little bit about what this psalm is. We don't know when this psalm was written. Uh, we just know that Asaph was the writer of it. Now, in 1 Chronicles chapter 6, David had selected some people, some Levites, that would actually lead a, a Levitical choir, and that when people would come in, they would, they would sing songs of worship. And so Jeduthun is a, a choir leader of, the, of a, a Levite group, and uh, so he's a singer. Don't know if he's written anything, but Asaph is not only a singer, but a songwriter. And so Asaph actually wrote this song. And it's a song of remembrance. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's, it's, a, it's an inspirational psalm to help you to remember what God has done. And so Asaph wrote this for Jeduthun, and Jeduthun would, would bring the choir together, and then they would sing this out. Now Asaph took a story of history um, for the people of Israel uh, as a time when Israel would face an op a difficult obstacle, like an obstacle that they, they felt like they could never overcome, and to show how God sees them through. And it's actually, he takes the story of the Israelites facing the Red Sea. So they've got this insurmountable obstacle in front of them, the Red Sea. Behind them, they've got the dust cloud of the chariots of the Egyptian army coming after them. That's their distress, okay? So he writes this story. He's like, listen, I want, I want to sing this song. When you, when you come to the temple and you sing the song, you, like, you know, they rock it out like they did this morning. And they're saying, our God is able. And that's what's going to happen in this song. It's a song of remembrance that God is able. So we're gonna break it down, and uh, there's four sections in this psalm before we get to it, and uh, there's a word that's after verse three, uh, uh, after nine, and verse 15. Anybody know what that word is? Little word, starts with S. Uh, selah, or uh, Salah, yeah, there's, they, they don't really know what that word means, but the idea is, it's like a pause. It's like a, hey, stop and think about what you just read. You know, don't just rush on. I want you to stop and process this because there's some points along the way that he wants you to consider. And so it's really good, and I love the psalm, it's been a great psalm, first service, enjoyed it, I think you will too. So look at it with me, verses one through three, this is where he begins, all right? This is what he says, he says, I cried out to God. Now the Asaph is like thinking, I'm in the middle of this obstacle, the obstacle's in front of me, the Red Sea, there's the dust storm behind me. He's like one of the Israelites at that time. He says, I cried out to God for help. He says, I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. He says, at night, I stretched out my untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. He said, I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. He said, I mused, that's like processing things, thinking about things, and my spirit grew faint. Now, in other words, what's going on here, the, Asaph is trying to get you into the moment. It's like, have you ever been in those moments where you're facing an obstacle that's too big for you that you're like, listen, I keep hitting myself, I keep trying to fix it, but I can't fix it. I'm, I'm like, I, I need God and I need him to help me get through this. I mean, have you ever been there before? Like, that's what he wants you to kind of stop and think about. He's like, we've all in moments of our lives where we're running up against a difficult moment. We're saying, God, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get over this, but I'm coming to a place where I have no power, no ability. I can't overcome this obstacle. And it's where God is saying, stop. Stop trying to fix it and let me help you. And that's where the psalmist get. He got right to that point where he stopped trying to fix it and let God do what God needs to do. I, you know, I'm, I, I love to tinker with mechanics, and I kind of experienced this before. And, uh, and when I was in Plymouth, I was mowing my lawn, and I was going around the house. And one time, I passed around the house, and over the driveway, um, I didn't see it the first time because uh, there was nothing on the driveway. But on the second pass around, I noticed there was drops uh, in the path of uh, going across my driveway. There was like some brown little spots. I was kind of like, well, that's kind of funny. I mean, I never saw that there before. Didn't think anything of it, so I went around again. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden, I noticed on my third pass, there was another row of brown dots. Now, anybody know what's going on? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm losing oil, and I'm looking at this going, what is that? And I stopped the, I stopped the engine, I stopped it, the, the mower, and I'm like, I'm looking around, I see oil dripping down the bottom, and I'm kind of going, oh, no, but I'm a good American. I can fix this. So I like, I opened up the hood, and, and I'm like, I don't know where to begin. See, this was like the beginning days of my mechanic career, and uh, it's... It's uh, short-lived, but anyways, um, I see these bolts, and I'm like, well, I could take those out. So I just start cranking these bolts out, and I pull the, what I didn't know was the head gasket off, and I pulled that off, and I'm like, well, there, I, I don't know if this is the right spot. And so I pull that off, and I'm like, I, I need to call my dad. <laughs> so anyway. 
place. I call my dad, and my dad goes, hey, um, well, the first question he said is, why did you pull the head gasket off? I'm like, I don't know. There were bolts there. I took them out, and that's what I pulled out. I didn't know. I just figured that's where I'll start. And he's like, how about this? Why, don't you have a mechanic friend of yours? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, just call him. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I called my friend Matt, and I said, hey, Matt, I, I got a problem. told him about what was going on, and I, I told him what I had done. He, I don't know why he said, but he said the first thing he said, why did you pull those bolts out? Like, why did you? I said, I don't know. They were there. Just sue me, all right? I, I pulled it out. It's not the, he goes, he goes just, 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 just stop. Just stop what you're doing. He said, I'll be there in 20 minutes. He gets over there in 20 minutes, takes the bolts off the engine, and he says, listen, I don't want you to touch it. I I'll take care of this. I'm going to put this. And he, he didn't even fix it there. He pulled it off the engine mount, put it in the back of the truck, and he drove away. And I'm like, what in the world? So he brought it back with a bow tie. No, I never had a bow or anything like that. But, he, but he, uh, he put it on, and everything's working fine. And this is that moment where it's like, I'm scratching my head going, I'm trying to fix this, but I'm getting nowhere, and I'm actually making matters what? Worse. Worse. Because I'm trying to fix it. I don't have the ability to overcome this obstacle. Now, granted, I've gotten a little bit better since then. I've learned, don't do that. You know, because you got to learn, right? But the reality is, I kept hitting my face against that wall, and my, my nose is all bloody, and you would wonder, when's the guy going to stop? And see, this is, what the, what, this is what Asaph is saying. There's insurmountable obstacles in front of us, and we're good Americans. We're going to try to fix it. Not, that's not what he's thinking, but that's what we're thinking. We're going to fix it. But what he's saying is, you can't fix this. you got to stop. Stop what you're doing. And look at him. See, instead of looking at the obstacles, look up at the one who can overcome the obstacle. That's what he's trying to say. And so the, word, the question that you need to be thinking about, the Selah moment is, are you focusing on the obstacle in front of you? Or the problem behind you? Or the God who is able to overcome both? See, that's what, the, that's what Asaph is trying to get you to think. In the midst, for the Israelite, they, all they see is this insurmountable obstacle. This Red Sea is pretty big. And the dust cloud behind us is only getting closer. And you can try in all of your wits and wisdom and ability to come up with some idea. Can somebody build a bridge? Can somebody build a bridge? We're not going to be able to go back. We've got to go forward. But can somebody, what are we going to do? And they, they, they just have to stop and to look up. How many of us, maybe some of you, you're running against that wall, and somebody just needs to tell you, stop. Just stop. And look at the one who is able to help you get through. You've been trying to fix it, and maybe this is your moment where God is saying, this is why you came to church today. It's God's little voice saying, stop. Stop trying to solve it yourself, but come to me. Oh, the song is to, and so the, the song kind of goes slow, and he lets you think, am I doing that? Am I looking at the obstacle ahead of me, and it's insurmountable, or the problem behind me, or am I looking at the God that kind of causes these things to kind of fade, not go away, but just kind of fade out of view, because of who I'm to look at? Well, then he doesn't end there. He goes on, and he says, you kept me, so verse four, verse four through nine, look at it with me. He says, you kept my eyes from closing, like I couldn't stop thinking, couldn't stop processing, couldn't stop going through all this. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. And he's talking about his own life, like, uh, but for the Israelites, they're gonna, they're gonna look back, they're gonna think back. Like, where I'm at right now is terrible, it's difficult, it's troublesome. He says, so you're not gonna be wanting to sit where you are, you're gonna think about when it was a better time, right? I mean, you're like thinking, man, it was so better in Egypt, because didn't they want to go back? I mean, so they wanted to go back. It's like, it was better there, why die here? We could have, we could have been living large back there. I know we were slaves, but we, were, we could have been better than this. And he said, listen, you know, you start thinking about the old days and how things were better. And then he goes on to say, I remembered my songs in the night and my heart mused like I, process, I was processing that. And what he's saying is those songs that in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of obstacles in front of me and, and the distress behind me, there were moments where I would stop and I would, I would sing and comfort my heart. It's like, God, I need you. I am exhausted. I'm worried. I'm frightened. I'm disturbed by this. Anybody ever sweat in bed like they're just kind of like disturbed and frustrated and they just can't stop thinking and 
All of a sudden you're just, you know, gritting your teeth, grinding it. You're just like, and I start to sing this song and it just kind of, kind of calms my heart. I don't know why, but my kids don't come to me in the middle of the night when they're not feeling well. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's that lack of mercy gift. I'm not sure, but they don't come to me, but they go to mom. And, and then I'll hear a faint, a faint, a faint like voice. And I remember when they were young, she would, sing, she would sing little songs to them. And, you know, just, they're not feeling good, or they're upset, or worried, or, or scared. And they could sing a little song, and, and it just soothes the soul. A friend of mine in the church that we love to uh, get together, he tells me he loves to sing in the shower. <laughs> I love that. He just said, it just... It just settles me. I don't know about you, but maybe there's a song that you sing that you just, when you're in a stressful moment, you just sing a song and you say, oh. Maybe it's Jesus loves me, this I know. Whatever it is. But he's saying there's a song that I remember. And he says, I'm I'm pondering this. And he's like, and then he asks these questions. He says, and my spirit inquired, verse 7 through 9, he says, will the Lord reject forever? It's rhetorical, but he's saying, the answer is obviously no, he won't. He won't reject you forever. He's not rejecting you now. Will he never show his favor again? The answer is obvious. No, he will show his favor. He's always shown his favor. Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Absolutely not. He loves you no matter what. He will always love you. Has his promise failed for all time? Like he promised this, but but has he? Is it is it like null and void now? What happened? He's like no. Has God forgotten to be merciful? Like God can forget to be merciful. He is merciful. Has his anger withheld his compassion? He's like. No. So these obvious questions, in the middle of the night, have you ever asked these questions about God? God, where are you? Are you not this? What's happened? Why is this not happening? And all of this struggle and, and striving and trying to process of what's going on, and he lets you think about this. Asaph says, now ponder this. You've been in those moments where you're like, I've needed God's comfort, and in those moments where I've seen the obstacles that are insurmountable, it's like, I need God to show up in a big way and fix this because I can't fix this. But you're wondering, is he going to? And see, I think this is what Asaph is trying to get you to think. The, the second thing to consider is this. Is God the same today as he was yesterday? Has God like, has he been on a bad, is he on a bad day in that moment? You know, is this who God is or, or is it not? See, that's why the writer says he's the same yesterday, today, and what? And forevermore. He doesn't change. I mean, this is who God is. So when you're in the moment where you see the insurmountable obstacle, you've got to remember, God hasn't changed. God is to who God is. And that God is what? That God is able. And so in that moment, when you're going through an insurmountable uh, 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 obstacle in front of you, you just step back and you say, God, I know I'm, the tension inside of me wants to doubt you, but I've got to remember you are able because you're, you haven't changed you, you haven't changed. You are the same, and that you're able. So he lets you sit on that for a few minutes and kind of think about that. But then he does this. I love this. Then in verse 10 through 15, he says this. Then I thought. So now he's, he keeps thinking. Can't stop thinking about this. To this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. He said, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of what? Of long ago. And he says, I will meditate. That's like, I'm going to chew on this. I'm going I'm to chew on this to get sustenance from it. I'm going to meditate on this, on all your works, and consider all your mighty deeds. So he stops there and says, listen, this is what I'm going to fill my mind with. There's, there's two groupings. He says, I'm going to think about your works and your deeds, and I'm going to think about your miracles and your mighty deeds. These are kind of the same things. So the, 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 the works and the deeds are like uh, uh, things that you've just seen him do in your life, and you're like, well, that's pretty cool. But then there's those moments where it's like the miraculous, like only God can do. He said, I'm going to think about those things. 
I'm going to remember, because if, if God has not changed, I've got to remind myself of who God is and what God is able to do. Because what God is able, has done, he is still able to do today. And so I started to think about that. Like, are, what are some things that have happened in my life that, that I kind of saw? And I, we, we were at Haiti, in Haiti last year. And I'll, I'll never forget, this was one of those just little moments where God was saying, hey, listen, I'm here, and, uh, and, I, and I'm working and, and active, and I'm, I'm a part of your life, and I, I haven't gone anywhere. And we, we were, they, they told us, listen, you may get stopped in the airport, uh, but just keep your head down and just keep going. And, and, uh, and well, we, we were trying to do that. And this guy said, no, 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 we need to, we need to examine your bags. And and so we, we went through this dark, long tunnel. No, it wasn't that bad. So we, anyways, we went around the corner, and we're just standing there waiting, and we're like, all of a sudden, they're like, no, 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 you can't take this stuff in. And they're like, they're like talking in, in, uh, in uh, Creole, and I don't know Creole, and I'm like, God, I don't know what's going on here, and, and uh, all this kind of stuff. And we're all just kind of standing there wondering what's going to happen. We're not in the country. We're in the country, but not in the country yet. We're like, is this going to happen? And then in all of this, I mean, people are praying. You could tell. They're like praying, God, you're you're going to have to show up and do something. You're, we're here to make a difference in these people's lives for your glory, and we need you to show up. And it's something as little as simple as, that, as, uh, uh, as little as this, but it was absolutely huge and profound if you think about it. Uh, all of a sudden, some guy says, come with me. Just come with me. And, and they're like, grab the bags. And, and I'm like, uh, they're examining it. They're just grab the bags. And we're like, grab the bags from these guys' hands, putting them on our stuff, zipping them back up, and we're walking out. And we walk out, and nobody stopped us. And that was it. And we're all in the truck, and it dawns us in the truck going, what just happened? <laughs> and it's almost like God saying, hello. That was me. I did that for you. It's like, oh. See, then that moment, it's like you could almost forget about it, but it's meant to go into the recesses of your brain that when you get into an obstacle and something's stopping, you're going, whoa. And you say, God, we're, oh, I remember. I remember. You did that. You did that. I'll never forget, just, uh, you know, something happened this last week, and I was kind of like, whoa, this was kind of a, a moment where I saw God watch over me. I, I was driving the, my motorcycle uh, down 120, and, uh, and I, I love riding. It's therapeutic, it's enjoyable, and especially on a, on, a, on a nice warm day and a sunny day and all that stuff. Well, anyways, I'm driving, and I'm pretty aware of my surroundings, but there's a couple cars coming uh, on, on the other lane coming towards me, which is normal. And, uh, but anyways, some guy behind them decided to go into my lane and want to pass them. And I'm processing this, and I'm going, whoa, he's not going to make it. <laughs> I'm like, if I stay in this lane, he's going to take me out. And I'm like, and he's not budging. He's coming. And I, 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 I get over to the berm, and, uh, and all of a sudden, he passes me. So it's car, car, me on the berm. And, uh, and he passes in and gets into the lane. I don't know if he saw me at all. And, I, you know, I never got nervous. I never, I never, my heart didn't skip a beat. It was still beating and all that kind of stuff. But I got onto the, onto the road, and I'm like, whoa that was a close call i'm like i was so close i could have high-fived the guy i'm like seriously i was like oh my word this guy whoa i'm like god you took care of me so i got home and i told grace i said do not tell your mother <laughs> and i'm like whoa but that's a moment that i can step back and say god only you right. only you i i don't know what i could have i it was you and when, when, God, when, when, when we found out that Grace had that mass in her abdomen and, and then we did all the process of getting that all checked out and then the doctor says, she went through all the process and after prayers and all that stuff, he said, she's fine. No problem. Like only God. See, what he's saying is, I have to step back and I have to remember his deeds. This is what he's done. This is the miraculous, like when the disciples were, saw Jesus do feeding of the multitudes, like they can't, I mean, there's like no way they're feeding all these people, and, or that, that woman that lost her son, and he just touched this woman's child, and he came back to life. They're like, I gotta remember that. See, this is, this is what Asaph is trying to say. In those moments when you're facing a difficult obstacle, there's distress behind you and it's insurmountable in front of you. Listen, stop, stop what you're doing and look up. Look to him who is able to do it, who is able to get over this. I don't know what it's gonna look like on the other side, but what I do know is that he has proven himself faithful. 
He has proven himself in his deeds and his works and his, and his miracles and his mighty deeds. That's what he's trying to say. And he goes on to say, he doesn't end there. He says, your ways, O God, he says, are holy. They're, they're like no other. He says, what, what God is so great as our God? Then he starts to compare. Is anyone like our God? He's like, you got to stop and think about that. He says, you are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. I mean, they're leading them out of, the promised, out of Egypt into the promised land. But they're facing an obstacle, and what he's saying is, you got to stop and think about this. And, and you got to realize and remember, God is able. And so this is the Selah moment. He says this, will you choose to remember all that God has done and believe that he's able to do it again? That's, his, that's what he wants you to ponder. Will you choose to remember, take a moment and just remember all that God has already done and believe that he's able to do it again? It's like, do it again. Do it again. I love that. I just want to say to God, do it again. Do it again. Wouldn't you? It's like, I want to see him do what only he could do. And that's what, that's what Asaph is trying to get you to think. He's saying, listen, are you focusing on the obstacle in front of you or the problem behind you? Are you, are you thinking and looking to the God who's able? Is God the same today as he was yesterday? Absolutely. And so will you choose to remember all that God has done and believe that he is able to do it again? So then he stops, lets you think about that for a minute. Look at verse 16. Now, then he says, the waters saw you, O God. Now, this is talking about the Red Sea that's in front of him, okay? This is, he's using this story. Uh, he says, the waters saw you, O God, and this is how the waters reacted to God. I love this. You can't miss this. He said, the waters saw you in what? What did they do? They writhed. The very depths were convulsed. I mean, they were freaked out. The water in front of them here comes God, and he's saying, the water's freaked out. Oh, no, no. I love the song. It's a newer song. It said, the wind and the waves still know his name. I love that. When Jesus calmed the storms in the boat, and he says, hey, calm down. And what did they do? They calmed down. And I love that part of the song, this new rendition of it as well. It says, the wind and the waves still know his name. And he's saying, the water saw him, the Red Sea saw him, the water's freaked out. And then he describes how God came into this scene. He says this in verse 17. He says, the clouds poured down water, so there's rain going on. The skies resounded with thunder. There's lightning and thunder. Uh, the, your arrows flashed back and forth. That's the, thund uh, the lightning. He says, your thunder was heard in the whirlwind, so there's like this tornado effect. He says, your lightning lit up the world, and the earth trembled and quaked. The earth trembled and quaked. And I was like, put that all together, and this, so guys, do this, would you put that up together? This is what the, the, the Red Sea saw and felt when, when, when he came. This, check this out. Here comes God. Here he comes. And, 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 and you can't, the sound can't do it justice. You know, it's like that loud crack and that whistling wind and that rumble of the ground, all that was in there. And it's like God saying, here I come. And he just stands there. Here I come. You know, if you heard kind of some of that stuff, would you be not afraid? <laughs> you know? get down below the water the water saw God coming and freaked out and, and Asaph saying whoa here comes our God I don't think you get it guys I think you're looking at me kind of like whatever seriously here comes our God he says this, I love verse 19. He says, your path led through what? Your path led through the sea. So as that water started to part, they, you know, here God is walking right through. Just, you back away. You back off. And he says, your way through the mighty waters, 
though, and look at this, though your footprints were what? Were not seen. They're standing there, Moses is lifting up his hands, and the Israelites are waiting for, what's God going to do? And all of a sudden, boom, and there's no footprints. And they're looking at Moses going, whoa, Moses, you're really cool. Good job. No. They're saying, that's our God. He didn't leave his footprints, because we're always looking for his footprints. We don't need his footprints. He's already done it. We know who he is and what he's able to do. And that's his footprint. And he says, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So then, and then it's kind of a Selah moment. He doesn't say it, but that's the whole point is that you would stop and ponder. And this is the last thing. Will you trust in his presence and power to see you through like he did Israel? Will you trust in his presence and power to see you through like he did Israel? See, this is a song that Asaph wrote that he was like, dude, we need to charge you up. That when you're facing some obstacles that seem insurmountable and distress that's behind you, you don't keep your eyes on that. I mean, I think Peter had something, about, you know, experienced something like that. And you just keep your eyes on him. And you remember that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that you remember what he's done and what he is able to do, that he can do it again. So will you trust in him and his presence and his power to do it again, to do it again. See, the, that's a song. So whenever they would sing the song, Jeduthun would cue the music, and they would sing the song, and the Israelites would go, yes, 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 that's our God. That's what he's done. That's, see, that's what a song of remembrance is supposed to do. And like when these guys were singing these songs, I like, you know, these songs are songs of remembrance. Like this song right here, My Lighthouse. I mean, great remembrance song. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. I'll say it again. You are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. And then he says, my lighthouse, believe me, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. You're my lighthouse. I will trust the promise that you will carry me safe to shore. He says, I won't fear what tomorrow brings. With each morning, I'll rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. That is a song of remembrance. It's to say, don't you forget, no matter what you go through, no matter what you face, no matter what obstacles in front of you and the distress that's behind you, you have a God that comes in the lightning and wind and thunder and earthquake, and he's coming, and he means business. And it's kind of like, I got my big dad coming, and he's going to help me get through this, because I can't do this, but I know that I can trust in him, and no matter what is in front of me, it may be too big for me, but it's never too big for him. And so I'm going to celebrate and sing, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to give him my hand, and I'm going to hand, give him a, come on, man. Hello. Anybody else? We're going to do that for him. We're going to say, God, this is for you. This is for you. Because it wasn't me. It was you. Are you, when you clap, when we clap in the morning, when we sing these songs, you know, does it feel good for these guys? I'm sure. Because it's like, they want to serve you. But it's not for them. It is for him as we sing the songs of remembrance and say, God, you did this. You, get, you, you are good. And we sing your praise. And God's word says in, in the Psalms that he inhabits the praise of his people. He loves that. I like Psalm 77. Can you tell? I love it because it's, it just helps us to remember that our God is able. And when you have somebody that's going through, like my brother-in-law and others, they may feel like they're going through an insurmountable obstacle ahead, you could say, you, you need to read Psalm 77. That'll that can maybe really help you. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what word God is speaking to you right now, but he, he's speaking to you. I know he is, because that's God. And he's speaking to you. And he's saying, well, it's somewhere in here, there's something you needed to hear. I don't know what it was, but you needed to hear it today. And I'm grateful for that, because his word will never return to him void. That's what he does. And we're going to invite you to pray. Maybe there's, uh, we got some folks that are going to come and pray. They're going to, they'll be standing up here, so go ahead and come. Those of you that are praying, would you come? They're going to be here to pray with you. Maybe you got some things that you want to lift up to the Lord. 
Maybe you want to pray about some things. Um, but this is your moment to be able to come before the Lord and just say, God, here it is. I don't know what obstacle you're facing or maybe a friend or family member is facing, but we're going to stop and we're going to, we're going to go back to him. And uh, so why don't you stand for closing prayer? Would you join me? Let's pray together. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you that we get a moment to just read Asaph's song of remembrance of what you've done in the past and that you're able to still do today. And it excites our spirit. It, it, it fills our hearts with joy, knowing that no matter what we face, that you will see us through, safe to shore. And I don't know how, how that'll all work, but I just know that you're able because you've done it before. And God, if there's somebody in this room that is going through some things, I pray that they would see that, that they matter to you and that uh, you want them to stop trying to fix it and look to you. Just look to you. And God, I pray that you would show them how big and mighty powerful and amazing you really are. Lord, I pray if there's anyone in this room that has never surrendered their lives to Jesus, I pray just by the testimony of these kids and uh, this adult that got baptized this morning, may they stop and say, Jesus, I surrender to you. Be my Savior. And I pray, God, that uh, our lives would be forever changed as we just stop and remember you and how you've saved us, how you've rescued us, how you've changed us, and how you're not gonna stop doing that. You don't uh, go on vacation, you don't hang it up on a shelf, you, you're walking beside us, no matter what we face. God, we love you, and uh, we pray that you'd speak to us now, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, have a great day, don't forget, come up here and pray with these guys, they'd love to pray with you, and we'll see you soon.